but by the grace of God, her arm stretched out, you know, and I was able to get that, that arm bar, and I'm so proud for that to happen. Andrea KGP Lee! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. <laughs> That's dangerous. Listen to me, we're at it. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Uh, Matt and I finally uh, in the same uh, in the same Zoom room. Be uh, united and it feels so good. Started coming in too hot? No, I mean, I it feels so coming. good is reunited. Coming I, in I, too I, hot? No, no, no. I, I was thinking reunited and it feels kind of as I suspected it would feel. Uh, <laughs> mm. I'm not accepting that. First okay. of all, it's good to be back, Jimmy. It's good to have you. For the, for the people that were wondering, I'm getting some DMs. I'm sure. getting some messages, you know. My head look weird. No, you look terrific. Unshaven, a little rugged. It's a good look for you. Thank You're you. welcome. Uh, well, first of all, Jimmy, I was in Texas. Yes, you were. Okay. I was watching some fantastic fights there. I was doing, looking for a fight with my buddy, Dana White, and Dean Thomas, the infamous Dean Thomas, yes. who's now an analyst. I who's know. Who's now a, um, who does Dean Diaries. He's taken over the MMA world by storm. Dean He's Thomas. very good, too. Yes. You know what I mean? So... Uh, yeah, so I was out there, and then when I got back, you know, I always tell you, life's like passing the guard. It's about balance. I needed to spend some time with the family, so yes. we went to Kalahari. It's fun to say, Jimmy. You want to, do you want to say it? Kalahari. It's fun to say. Uh, so we went to Kalahari up in Pennsylvania. It's an indoor water park. Okay. So I'm doing the tube thing. Met some fans out there. They're fan, they, they enjoy this, this podcast. So, you know, hey, I had a great time. I'm refreshed. Now, did the, the wife and the daughters, did, did the whole family love it? Hey, oh, look, everybody had a good time. Such a great time. So yeah. you were at Phoenix we did. and Forest on. Yes. Did you have fun with them? Honestly, yeah. I mean, they were both so great. Well, well I mean, I, I expect you to have fun. How much, Did you have a lot of fun with them? And did you have almost as much fun? Like, listen. I don't want to put apples and oranges in the same kind of thing. Yet, right. Because I know we're in a different class altogether. Absolutely. I mean, in a sense, our chemistry, Jimmy, there was great bro romances in the world and, and they're out there. But I'll tell you right now, me and you were up there with me and Dean Thomas. We're up there pretty close. So when you say you had a good time, for instance, with Phoenix, yes. did she bring up any stories about um, maybe... <laughs> Two, two Italian guys talking and she was, didn't see them from afar and she thought maybe they were deaf people, but yet they were just two Italian guys doing this. What the fuck? She, she did, did, did she bring up that story? <laughs> she did not. Now, and there's no need, I think, to be, no need to besmirch her story. Uh, let's I'm say sorry. this. I'm no, not you're not wrong. I'm not attacking my friends. No, I'm, no, of course not. Let's say this. <laughs> I would say, you're saying that I have as much fun. Well, Jimmy, I mean, listen, Hey man, don't treat me like the, you know, like listen, I've been with you a long time. Absolutely. You know I love I mean? you. So don't yes. look at some of these other ones like a, I'm not gonna say the Phoenix, because that wouldn't be would be inappropriate, but don't look sure. at Forrest like a nice piece of ass and look at Forrest like that. Like, oh look, I got a nice, this is a new, new and refreshing, this relationship. My re Forrest Griffin. Oh wow, oh look, he's he's got some silly little condescending type jokes and oh oh wow, he's so rugged and he's taller than Matt. Don't look at all this. Yeah. And 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 look to you know look to think the grass is greener, my friend. Yeah. Well, I mean, say the grass is greener. I, I look over there. I see at least there's some grass. You know, on this side there's nothing but pavement and glass, and over there at least there's a little. But I like pavement. I like pavement. Well, I didn't I, have as much I, fun with them. I like pavement too, buddy. And listen, even if you, there's a little bit of truth in every no, there's none. joke of yours. Let me tell you something. I can't yeah. stay mad at you. Jim, can I ask you a question, Jimmy? I actually got serious for once. I called you Jim. What, buddy? I got serious right now, and I called you Jim. I, yes. I don't usually do that. I think I found somebody that I like less 
than Chip. Who? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't fucking know. But I, it's another guy that it's so funny because you, usually when you're friends with somebody, like their friends, you'd be probably like like, like Anthony Kumi. I like Anthony Kumi a lot. I sure, he funny. loves you. Um, I don't think I can hang out with these guys either with Doug Bell and our first chip, you don't see, you know, people keep going, all right, man, you know, it's funny. It's funny. But when are you really going to be on the podcast? Yeah. And the same answer is, is, is the same, the same answer every time. Never. He'd I'm love never, to have you on. He I asks mean, never, me. even if he tried to grease me with a little something, maybe pay for that next Kalahari trip. No, I'm not doing it. No offense. <laughs> I'm not. You. I like, I love that people love him. I just don't think we'd have a good chemistry. And Doug Bell, I think I'd give him some jujitsu lessons because he needs some fucking confidence. Yeah. Well, Doug Bell's just medicated. We should bring in our guest back. Our guest. Yes. Is Hi, Andrea. Now, are you a Jeep person typically? Like, is this just a, a, a vehicle you have? Or is that like, because people who like Jeeps like nothing but Jeeps. I'm a Jeep person. I love, I love the Jeep. Uh, they do have their, you know, they have pros and cons. Um, for interviews and stuff, they're not really good. <laughs> uh, they're really loud. I see you as a, as an outdoorsy yeah. person. Is that correct? I see you taking that thing, putting a canoe on the top and going places. Are you that person or no? I would be, but I live in Shreveport, Louisiana, and there's really, I mean, we have a river and stuff, but I don't really go to the river that often. It's just... I don't know. I'm not really clean. Yeah. I don't have a canoe. Um, I haven't really taken the doors off or I've taken the, the, the roof off a couple of times, but it's like every time that I do, it always rains on me. It's That's like, it. it'll look beautiful outside. And then I take the roof off. So I'm like, Oh, it feels so great. And then I'm not lying. It will start raining. <laughs> now forgive it. Forgive an idiotic question. I'm looking at the roof over you. That's not like a convertible, right? Like, do you have to take the roof off physically or do you just hit a button and it comes off and goes down? Yeah, I have to know this one. I have to like pull these things, like um, clip them. And That's then I have to do it. Then they, they piece together one time. Like I said, I got caught in the rain. I was driving to Houston with Ainsley and I, the clouds started getting really dark. And I was like, Ainsley, we're going to have to pull over soon. Unfortunately, there was no way to, there was no gas stations or anything along the route. It was just a bunch of like land and there was uh, some dirt roads. So it, it, you know, I thought I was going to have time to pull over. Unfortunately, I wasn't. It started pouring down rain and I had to jump out real quickly, like pull over in this like dirt road and um, try to put these together. I had them. I thought I had them together, but rain was still like pouring through. Um, because they have to fit perfectly. Like they fit like a little puzzle and right. uh, they have to, they have to go right up underneath each other perfectly. So I was like, I had to jump back out, jump up there and like try to wiggle them together. It was, uh, it was fun. A Ainsley and I were both soaked. She, she loved it. She laughed about it. Yeah, oh, who's that? Had... Your daughter? Yeah, my daughter. Oh, that's oh okay. Sweet. How old is she? She will be 10 in July. Oh. Okay. So she was kind of watching mom panic and try to put together a roof as it was raining. I would love that too. If I was a kid, It'd be fun to watch one of your parents trying to put a roof on a car as it's raining. <laughs> Come on. Who would love that? She just backs in, in the back seat. She's like, ah, I'm getting no wet, you know, and it's just like <laughs> flooding the Jeep. My Jeep stunk really badly though, for a long time after that, because of the rain and sunk into the, the carpet and you know, that oh, rain. So it smell like that wet dog rain smell. Yeah. Unfortunately. How well, did it feel to fight? Sorry, but how did it feel to fight in front of a full crowd finally? I mean, and how nice was that to finally be back in front of people? That was great. I think that helped me out tremendously, just having that energy in the audience. Because uh, before my fight that I, that I had in Vegas, you know, I only, I only luckily I only had to fight once without a crowd. Um, but it just, it just didn't feel right to me. And I, I really think that it, you know, it, I don't want to say that it necessarily played a part, but I, I feed off of the crowd. I feed off of that energy. And I think it helped me a lot. I think it helped everybody a lot because we had a lot of great finishes um, that Saturday night. So you felt a big difference between fighting with a crowd and not a crowd. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think so. I think I'm a crowd. I like to fight in front of a crowd. I'm that type of person. Others, though, seem to do fine without it. Yeah. Did you know you missed it as much as you did until you actually experienced it? Like, was it one of those things where like, 
oh yeah right like some some people i think kind of got used to the whole thing being without a crowd um did you realize when you were fighting without them like ah this this kind of is not the same i did you know and not not being able to you know dap people up on on the way out walk into the cage um that's something that i like to do you know i like to you know, be able to mingle with fans, you know, and, and sign autographs and do all that type of stuff and take pictures afterwards. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's a different type of feeling. And when we don't have that, it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's lonely in there. <laughs> you get, how does it feel like you get the monkey off your back? You were coming off a few losses. I mean, it's frustrating with the split decisions because sometimes you're like, yeah. oh, I feel like I should have got that nod. So you had a couple of those and then, then the, uh, unanimous decision to Roxanne so now to come back and you get your first finish yeah and by the way I had such a good segue but then Jimmy asked the question I was gonna be like all right we're talking about getting caught in the rain what about getting caught in a triangle arm bar and then Jimmy I should have left that segue out I shouldn't even brew it no you could have went back to it I mean that I I just didn't realize you were going there Jimmy sometimes I make a left turn and you do so, Andrea, <laughs> yeah. you got your first finish after a few losses. That had to make it even sweeter. Are we still on cloud nine? How do we feel? Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I still am on cloud nine. I mean, I I feel great, you know, and uh, I didn't really get injured. I don't believe, you know, uh, I didn't take a whole lot of damage. I, honestly, I was just, I was really surprised with how well I felt after the first round, I, I wasn't tired. And I, I, I was like, man, that was five minutes. I don't feel like it was five minutes. And I was like, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be in the first round. And I was, I was honestly expecting, I was expecting a lot more. And I, and that's how I am always going into a fight. You know, who it doesn't matter who I'm fighting. I always, you know, hype them up in my mind, but right. you know, just, just cause you, sh- you should never underestimate anyone. Um, and you know, going into the second round, I felt great. And then I got that, the, the triangle, you know, which I, which I had actually, I had been landing that a lot uh, in training. And so I kind of envisioned that a couple of times. And even in the back, I was warming up and we were kind of like going through like sort of a, a light, like crease bar thing. And I was, uh, you know, they're like fainting and throwing things at me and I'm working on, you know, getting my fit ins into a takedown. And I ended up getting that. Like, I, I remember going for that crucifix and then going straight to the triangle while I was in the back. And, and, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, I guess it's, you know, one of those things you practice it enough, you know, you end up doing it, you execute it. Does building people up before, does that ever backfire? Like I've heard of guys have said things like where they're fighting somebody who they've had a certain feelings about and you realize like, Oh shit, I'm in the cage with this person. And then it kind of goes away quickly, but has it ever caused you to overestimate somebody um, and, and kind of maybe fight differently than you should have because you were giving them even a little more credit than maybe you should have. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I feel like that definitely happens in quite a, you know, a couple of fights, especially the, I believe the ones that you lose, you know, you hype someone up so much in your head and, you know, even with, with, with Roxanne, you know, I, I hyped her up because I mean, we had already fought once before. And I mean, I know that she's really good on the ground and, you know, I started to underestimate my ground game and, and my take, I guess my own, my own takedowns. I was underestimating those, you know, and um, it causes you not to fight at a hundred percent. Like you are, I don't know, you're just focused on too many things. And, you know, I do think that that, that does sometimes it will affect you, but for this fight, I refuse to let myself think that way. Did you feel like your job was at stake? Were you like, man, yeah? Yeah, I, of course, you know, and I, and I know that I'm, I'm much better uh, of a fighter than I feel like I've shown previously. And, um, you know, I just want to continue to prove that. I want to continue putting on exciting fights and I want to stay in the UFC as long as I can. And, you know, I see a lot of great athletes, a lot of great UFC fighters who've been with the UFC for a long time, you know, and they get cut. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, I'm like, it definitely puts us all on the edge of our seat. And I knew I needed to get a win. I felt I definitely had to get a win. Do you start doubting yourself after three straight? Like, you know, because, you I mean, obviously, t- you know, all decisions, two splits, it's, it's very difficult, I'm sure. But do you ever start getting that? Like, what do I have to do to 
to, does that creep into your mind at all? It does. Yes. No, those, those thoughts have definitely crept into my mind and I try to shake them out, you know, but at the same time, I don't know, sometimes it's hard and, you know, doubt is like, it's a, it's a tiny seed. And once it's planted, you know, it can grow and it just can consume you, which I just, I refuse to let it consume me, but I feel like the feelings of doubt were definitely there, you know? And I mean, I just had to, I just had to change up a few things, you know, going into this fight. A lot of it was mental. And I feel like I've never really had that issue before because I've always been very strong mentally, but I've also never lost three straight fights in a row. So uh, it can definitely play some tricks on your mind. Yeah. yeah. And it's also, you see other guys come back after, you know, two losses or, or, uh, you know, three losses. There's, there's quite a few people like, you know, again, I mean, Ngano had two losses and he came back and looks great. So sometimes people make like a, some adjustment and all of a sudden uh -huh. you're back on a win streak and you, you'll, you know, that's in the rear view mirror. Can I talk to Chesney, please? I think I definitely, hold on, girl. Why are you trying to get, start a conversation? It's <laughs> <laughs> I got I got three girls too. It's so funny. Oh, I, is she in the car with you? Yeah, she is. She was she's playing on her iPad, but now she's like oh, calling her cousin. He's that's sweet like, though. That, that she that was very well behaved. Oh yeah. My yeah, kid would have been tapping me on my head and stuff. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't curse. I didn't know she was in the car. I'm glad I didn't curse. Oh, gee, oh, did I curse? I get worried. She oh, wouldn't have heard it. Oh, she was watching the iPad. I guess that makes it different. Well, if you're a parent and your kid has an iPad, that's got to be a dream, right? Like, it's just so much easier to occupy somebody for a long time with that than it would be without it. I wouldn't say it's a dream. I mean, sometimes it comes in handy, you know, but I think that it, it, they they get attached to it. And sometimes it's just really hard to get her off of it. And I have to ground her, you know, I'd be like, okay, you're grounded from it. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes she just, she's like, no, I'm watching this. I don't want to get off, you know, and then it causes some issues so you know you have to re remind them you know the parents are boss <laughs> yeah right do you have any shows that you're watching together like me and my girls are watching the well we watch all the marvel shows like whatever whenever they're on the disney shows but also like uh what are we watching lately uh what's that one shoot you're watching it the other night it'll come to me oh game changers the mighty ducks the return of emilio estevez jimmy oh really you might want to watch it just well, no, Jimmy's a big Charlie Sheen fan, but, but his poor brother, <laughs> yeah, he does everything right. He's, yeah, thank out. God they're, they're doing something back with the Mighty Ducks. So it's on Disney. Uh, it's cute. It's cute. You know? I love the Mighty Ducks coming up, but she's it never might, seen them. Well, it doesn't matter. It whole it, you don't need to watch the well. Well, then you can go back and watch the original. I'm not telling you what to do, but if you have that Disney Plus, it's fun. And we're doing. Oh, we have that. Disney Plus. I'll check it out. Yeah, so I'm you watch always, the original with her, and then it, it, you have the original ones in it. Jimmy, this is very, the people out there want to know, the parents. Sure. Because right. it's hard for the parents to watch something with the kids that they're going to like, all, you know, yeah. not, it's not like you're eating broccoli watching it, you know what I mean? Oh, huh. I love the first the, the first one, you know, I mean, that was great, so. Yeah. It's called Check Game that out. Changers. It's called we Mighty Ducks at Game Changers, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll you check that out. It. Now, yeah. what else? What else unrelated to MMA are you into now, Andrea? You can give us a hobby. We know you don't canoe. We found out you don't have a canoe. Yes. But you found that out. I don't know why I assumed you had a canoe. But uh, it could be a hobby or it could be a book you're reading, something you're watching. Give us something. The audience wants to know you better. Well, hobby, I guess. Every now and then, you know, I like uh, to create things or, you know, I get crafty. I like to paint things. I do enjoy doing that with Ainsley. Sometimes I'll be like, let's, let's, I'll draw something and we'll paint it together, you know? So nice. that, that's, that's fun. I mean, it's not something that I do religiously. So, I mean, I guess that's hard to say if it's a hobby. Yeah. I, I feel like, cause I'm mostly training all the time that I don't, I don't make time for other, other things that I wish I, I did, but we do have a PS4 and me and Tony, you know, we'll get on there and Ainsley will get on there and we'll play some, some uh, Call of Duty or Apex or uh, something, you know, that, that, uh, that the PS4. Right now I'm like playing this Horizon game. It's called Horizon something. It's like a open world type game. And I got Ainsley. She created a character. I created a character. So, you know, we're just kind of doing that a little bit. Oh, that's but so cool. I'm such other a than that, not much. I mean, you know, we'll put our skates on and we'll go skating. 
that the last game Jimmy had was a Coleco Vision. So I had told Jimmy to get the uh, Oculus Quest. So now Jimmy's yes. in the VR. Yes. And uh, Matt and actually Mrs. Sarah, uh, the workouts uh, yes. is what motivated me to finally get it. And I, I do that because I know, Andrea, you probably look at me and think like I'm the, just a gym rat. But no, I'm really not. Uh, <laughs> I do the uh, the awful that little punching boxing exercise and it makes you sweat. And, uh, you know, yeah. So thank you. To get you Matt. some egg weights. Add some egg weights to that. Yeah, I probably, what are the egg whites? You mean the food or is there an exercise called egg no, whites? No, the egg whites. You know, even Joe Rogan always talked about them. They're like these little weights that you you can uh, slide on onto your middle finger and you can hold them. At, they're, they're like the size of an egg. Egg weights. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I thought you said egg, egg whites. whites. Egg uh -huh. weights. I thought you said egg whites. I'm, I'm, my uh, headphones are not particularly good. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, but you got to hold the controller. So what you might have to do is maybe get the wristband, the wrist weights. Because you're holding a controller when you're punching. Oh, okay, yes, yes. That's well, right, maybe the right, wrist. Right. I gotta look for that. I'm probably gonna <laughs> yeah, get, get that for my wrist weights. <laughs> yeah, the wrist ones. You know, Ainsley has an Oculus too, and and I've tried it before, and that thing can get you in trouble. What kind of trouble? Like punching walls? I mean, or? like you could break something, you could hit something. I yeah. mean, <laughs> well, I almost serious. broke my knuckle. I was doing it, and I'm. But yeah, Ainsley is ten. I'm fifty-two. And I was doing a Star uh, Star Wars thing with a lightsaber, and I went to swing it, and I forgot that beyond the barricade is my kitchen counter, oh. um, and I smashed my knuckles swinging a lightsaber. Uh, probably two days after I got it. So yeah, there's a bar a barrier around you, but you got to be careful not to go through it because yeah. you have furniture there. Jimmy, Jimmy, let me cut you off right there. Don't don't tell Andrea about your your VR little stump in your finger. What are you telling next? You stump your toe? She's a cage fighter, Jimmy. <laughs> She's That's a true. cage fighter. You're like, oh, Andrea, you're not going to believe that. Oh, one time, I, I, my pinky went, come on, man. Yeah, but when you're fighting, you're expecting to get hit or you're Thank expecting you. to hit someone. That's so right. it's like that catches you off guard. I mean, like. You're right. Andrea, That's right. Different. Andrea, you're right. Jimmy, I'm sorry. No, I mean, look, <laughs> she definitely knows a lot more about being inside the cage than I do, but I have suffered more Oculus injuries than anybody else in the Zoom chat. You guys very have true. neither one of you guys have ever gotten hurt playing Oculus. I have. Very true. I uh, heard. I've, I heard. I've come close to. You have. To, to destroying our TV, which would suck because it is not. It's, it was <laughs> a really nice flat screen, and I would not want to do that. Well, is yours plugged in? Because there's two of them. There's the Oculus Quest, which is plugged into the computer, um, and then there's the Oculus Two, which is what I got, which is what yeah. Matt has, which is the, your total. It's Wi-Fi. It was yours plugged in or no? Um, ours is the wireless. Ours is the yeah. wireless. Yeah, okay, she has what we have. Okay, because you get it right at Best Buy. That type of thing. It's so easy to do. Yeah, but yeah, she's talking about if you get too close to something, you punch it like you and your little pinky. Yeah, you know. I didn't mean to. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, anything could happen. It's true. Especially that boxing one. Have you have you tried the that boxing one? You get somebody like right in front of you boxing you. And uh, that one's tough. I mean, I, I swear, I, I'm like, I'm trying to move, I'm trying to punch, and I'm like all over the floor. So you definitely, I mean, like, if you don't set it, you out at like an area that's far away from everything, you might just run in or kick, like, you might just run into something or punch something. And that would, yeah, you, that would not be good. That would, that would hurt. You could knock out your punch kid or something by accident. You got to be careful. Could. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes yeah. I'm playing, sometimes I'm playing, and my wife will come over and like hit me in my, my privates or something I'm like ah, yeah. the guys are like I'm squatted up. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like ah, I'm like nothing. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, you're a nerd. I hear you're a nerd. You're a nerd. my squad hears me and my thing. They're like, hey man. I'm like, sorry guys, oh. let's get back to business. <laughs> it's pathetic. Well, you know, I haven't. I mean, I only recently started playing games again like that, like the PS4, and yeah, I tried the Oculus, and you just forget how much fun it is. You know, you you get away from those things when you're a kid, but true. I don't know. There's there's no rule against an adult, you know, being able to still be a kid, sort of. You know? Thank you, Andrea. Yeah. Thank you. So on that, thank you so much for that last line. <laughs> and I'm going to bring that up to my my partner here. When he, when he, when he teases me a little bit. He can I'm be, not going to lie. you look at me and him, you might think, oh, who bullies who? Ah, well, bit. having a kid makes, makes you a kid all over again. You get to enjoy the holidays True. again. You know, you get to be... You get to like, you know, you get to be Santa Claus. You get to be the Easter Bunny. Yes. You get to watch all of the old Disney shows. Yes. And, you know, have an excuse. 
Yes. And like, oh, I'm watching, I'm watching The Lion King, you know, like, uh, I'm watching this with Andy. You get to go to the movie theater. Oh, well, not right now, but eventually when they open back up, you know, and watch all yeah. the new anime Disney's coming out. That's, you know. It's true. <laughs> TV does that by himself. It might be, might be odd. Yeah, I'm not a big Disney movie fan. I, I understand why people like them, but I'm not a big fan of like uh, even the adult, uh, like what are the not the adult, uh, what do they call the adult animations? Like uh, the ones that are like uh, live Spielberg. Action. The live action, like Aladdin, the live action Lion King. No, 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 no. They, they're actually the um, animes, the Japanese animes. No, no, no. They're, it's like uh, people doing it, not the cartoons. Like the what, Up was the movie called Up with the balloons. Oh, you're talking about like the Pixar. Uh, Pixar. Pixar. Yeah, Pixar. I yeah. love that Pixar. Pixar. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that. You don't like that? No, but I don't have any kids, so it's not my thing. You know, I don't. It's not a. He's Jimmy is so grim. He'll watch all the Disney movies, but he'll, now we lost Andrea. She left because she didn't like. The, I'm no. here now. Jimmy's so fucking grim that he'll watch these movies, the Disney. I'll watch all the Disney. Just until the parent dies and he's out. Dumbo's mom's gone. He's like, ah, he leaves. He Thanks for spoiling it. Lion King, father dies. He's like, ah, he leaves. He doesn't wait for the happy ending. You've just spoiled two it's, movies for me. It's morbid. Bambi too. They don't do that now in the in the new uh, Disney. You know, it's like. They don't it's kill like, what are you talking about? Look at Frozen. It's pretty new. Well, it? I guess you're right. Yeah, you're right about that. The parents yeah. die. The parents like, weren't in the sequel. But in the like, older like, animes, it's it's sadder the way that they show it. You know what I mean? I feel Disney kind of, I think it's deeper than that. I think they kind of get children ready for, for like, like, hey, man, hey, kids, and come to Disney, enjoy our rides because this doesn't last forever. That's what they're yeah. kind of putting out there. Because yeah. I remember watching with my young, my, she's 12 now, but my, my firstborn, she was younger watching Lion King. When that when he got trampled and he's just like and she's like ah, ah, oh my god ah, shit and then all of a sudden when when Shimba got Simba got a little older she's like oh the dad's back I go yeah that's right he's bad making think the things a zombie I it's hard to explain to kids Andrea yeah yeah, yeah it's it is. very depressing it is it, it, <laughs> and that I mean like with Lion King that made that made you feel a little better to kind of see him in the clouds or whatever yeah but you got. <laughs> got Bambi's mom and got shot by a hunter. Yeah, yeah, but damn, do I love that venison, so I can't really bitch about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a hypocrite I didn't the next time Ciro brings me back some dead deer meat. But uh, <laughs> listen, sorry to get so deep on, on the Disney movies. You, didn't, you know, you didn't expect this driving wherever yeah. you're driving this morning. I know, right? Didn't expect all that. Now, Andrea, before we, uh, we, I mean, we appreciate all the time you've given us. And before we, before we let you go, you didn't call anybody out. I think after the last, fight. is there anybody you have your, your eye on, or I mean, we, you obviously you'll take anybody they give you. But is there anybody that uh, would be ideal for you next? Uh, I'm still thinking on that. Actually, like, I, like I'm still, uh, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm just. I know that I would Alexa. Uh, man, I don't know. I don't. Don't I don't, be shy. Don't, don't be shy. You have uh, enough friends. You have enough friends. Yeah. Your your child needs another iPad soon. Who do you want to fight? Tell us. <laughs> I don't really know. Okay, but I but I feel like maybe they'll end up throwing me Alexa Grosso. You know, but I'm I'm not I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I, I mean I would I think I would I would be happy taking any any of of those fights. You know, I think that it would be fun. She's a striker, and I like to strike. You know, she's well rounded. I'm well rounded. I think yes. I just, I just feel like that might would be a fun fight. I like that. Okay. And I respect Rosso. her a lot. Mm -hmm. Alexa yeah. Rosso, very. That's a very nice fight. And you guys are ten and eleven, I think, right? Uh, yeah. Makes yeah. even more sense. Yeah, it's it's a perfect matchup. Now, let me ask you: Do you are you hesitant to call people out? Like I always figured, if I ever had to, if I was a fighter and I called somebody out, like oh shit, if you call them out. Now you better win because you called them out. Is there any of that thinking or no? Yeah, probably. Yeah. A, a little bit. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't like to necessarily call anyone out, I guess, because of that, you know, um, I like it to happen naturally or yeah. behind the scenes, you know, it's like I can throw my manager some names and then he can like work behind the, the curtain, you know, and, and get it done. And then okay. they tell you, and you're like, oh, it's this one. Oh, it's like putting yeah. your hand, hand in the hat and picking out the... Yes, but, you know, but also, like, things get twisted, too, you know, in the media, and, and you know, like, you, 
Because, I mean, I've read a couple of things already, and I'm like, I didn't say that exactly. It's not exactly, but, you know, but it's always, they always got to put it up there and, like, to, for, you know, like, little catching, little no, catchphrases. They like Real that. They like, they like the know. headlines. We know, know you're a nice person. People are going to hear yeah. this, and they're going to watch you. They like the way you fight. You don't need any new friends, you know? But let me ask you, uh, yeah. I, don't like to, I, don't, I, don't, I just want to hear your opinion on one fight. I don't like to do this because okay. you run into these people, so I don't want it to be awkward. But this one, I want your opinion, okay? I locked these two people in a cage. I want to know who you think would walk out. Sean Shelby or Jimmy Norton? Who would, if we locked them in a cage, argh, who would, that, that's Jimmy, by the way. This is Jimmy Norton. And you know Sean Shelby, Yeah. okay? Um, yeah. What do you think? Man, if you had thrown McMahon in there, I guess I'd say McMahon for sure, but you didn't throw, you didn't. No, no, he's out of the weight class. I got Jimmy somebody I think he could. Ah, Sean Shelby, but isn't he, doesn't he train? He's got to train. I mean, he's got yeah, access to everybody. Jimmy, Jimmy, you're ruining, she's going to pick him. if you get. You, Honestly, I don't know if Sean Shelby trains. Does oh. he? I, don't, I don't know if that guy trains. He watches a lot of fights. That's not the same thing. Has he got some say Jimmy did, he, did he get some work in with Jimmy Rivera as his head coach? I'm going to say Jimmy. Norton. Thank you. He's, yeah. I, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Eat it, Shelby. I'm, so, listen, I'm sorry. I might want to get some, some guys in the UFC too. So Shelby, no hard feelings. All right. But you're not training with Jimmy Rivera. <laughs> All right. All right. Andrea, yeah. it's good talking to you again. It's been a while. Yeah, your poor kids in the yeah. iPad might be running out. You got to get back in there. Yeah, I got to get back in there. I got to take her somewhere. <laughs> okay, well, drive safe. It was good talking to you. And uh, congratulations. Great talking to you all. Great, great Thank win you. over Antonina. Talk to you soon, all right? All right, talk soon. Congrats again. Bye. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Good to see you. Good. You too. Hi. Nice to meet you, Aisha. You Is that you your um? I I was gonna. I usually look to the name on the bottom, and I was gonna go Hot Machine. I don't oh, want to no, get. No, let me change it. That's my, that's my company's name. Oh, yeah, thank yeah, goodness, because I don't want this the, to come off. Who the years. hell's name is Hot Machine? <laughs> I'm like what? That's usually my name on there. So I'm like, this is confusing. Yes. Know. Yes. I gave that girl quite a bit of money on Saturday night. Good old Hot Machine. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a, what a smart business. How did you get into the liquor business? Cause it's like, you usually don't think of comedians being in that business, but it's, it's like everyone who does it makes a lot of money. I mean, that's a <laughs> smart, smart direction to go in. Well, thank you. I mean, you know, look, I'll be frank. I, I, I like to drink. So it came from a personal okay. <laughs> passion of mine. <laughs> and, um, and I was, you know, I, I, I was a stand up for I'm a full time stand up for 20 years and traveled all the time. And I'd go to great bars and then I get home. And there'd be like, you know, nothing but like th three flat light beers in my fridge. And I just wanted to have a better drinking experience. So I started making cocktails at home and keeping them in the fridge. Like I'd make a big bottle of them. So I wouldn't have to like, you know, I'd get them at midnight. I wouldn't have to make myself a drink. And I thought this would be great if you could buy it in the store. It was, it was a pretty straight line from like, uh, I like to drink to maybe other people would like to drink this too. That's great. Cause you, I've never heard of anybody getting involved in like doing a liquor company and then, and then selling their interests and losing money. I've never heard of anybody losing money selling their interests. So it's a I mean, really- People have been doing well. Obviously, Connor just had that big exit this year and the big Casamigos exit there. People have done really well in this area. There are very few women doing it. There are, right. there are yeah, very few black women, obviously. But this, I'm not a spokesperson. Like this, this is a company that I developed myself. So, you know, first and foremost, I'm the one who's passionate about it. I, I'm the one dragging the bottles around and telling people about it and, and, and you know, and- and kind of did a lot of day drinking, a lot of personal R and D to yeah. get to this place. <laughs> How much fun is that though? Like if you like to drink, I mean, you, and you technically, it's like, you're just pounding them back and it's like, well, I'm fucking working. I'm right. literally, I'm researching right. for my product. That's great. I did, I did, I did. I have a lot, there are a lot of expense account submissions uh, from <laughs> bars, but I also, you know what it is? I mean, you know, you're, you're a standup. Like I, when I was a lot younger and also for people that, oh, you know, when you're a comic, you, a lot of times you get paid in booze or you get like your drink tickets. And so like when I was younger, I was kind of indiscriminate with what I drank. It's like whatever was around. And as I get older, I just want to drink better. I mean, I'm 
not necessarily more. It's not really about volume. It's just about having like a quality drink when you get home. Uh, but yeah, I used to drink like a lot of garbage. Midori sours was a big favorite. Um, and when I was a real young comic, booze was like a source of calories. So I tried to order the drink with the highest caloric value because uh, yeah, it was broke. You know, it's funny too, like, because any smart club, they'll give like free food to the comedians, but any smart club will do half price drinks or you pay full price. I think, you know, I'm sure at one point in the late eighties, a couple of comedians just drank places out of business. And they're like, this is a dumb move. We can't give them free booze. It's not a no, smart, uh, you, you, smart you, you, thing. They switch to the, you get one, you get like a little ticket. You turn it in. Oh, I can have my one beverage now. Thank you so much. I'm yeah. Yeah. The old bringer shows you, you show up and you get a drink ticket. Awful. I don't, I don't Awful. miss those days at all. I don't Awful. even drink liquor, but it doesn't matter. I still don't miss those days of uh, having to hope you get free food at the bar. Do you still do stand up at all or just occasionally or? You know what? It was so weird. It's not like I quit. I just, I was, I was working. I, I mean, I was lucky that I had gotten super busy in television and it would like, I'd have to be up at five in the morning and I couldn't go to bed at two in the morning and get back up at five to go back to work. So I was like, I'm just going to take like a hiatus. And frankly, that was like seven years ago. Um, so I was talking with Chris Rock about this like relatively recently. And I was like, ah, oh, God, I just, I'm like, I fell off the bike. You know what I mean? And he's like, you're never going to forget how to be a comic. Like whenever you're, he's like, I he, literally, I think at that time he hadn't done stand up in 10 years before tambourine. So it was like a few years ago. He's like, he's like, when I, when I'm ready to go back to it, I'll go back to it and you'll go back to it too. And that was very, it was very comforting. <laughs> he's a oddly, like, he's a really good guy to talk. Like if I had to pick one comedian that would probably give good advice about anything, yeah. I think it would be him. His brain works in it really. He's a very practical person. And he seemed like he, he said stuff up to me about the business 10 or 12 years ago that I yeah. think of all the time. Like he's a really smart dude. So yeah. I he guess I didn't realize so young, like him and, and, and Dave yeah. both started when they were kids. Right. So they've just seen and done everything. And, uh, and they're both really great guys to talk to about the business. Cause they've obviously like gotten really far in it, but then you look at like, you know, Dave's, you know, Dave, Dave Chappelle's like branching on doing all kinds of stuff. And then Chris is like a movie star. And then sometimes you feel like, you know, you've been doing stand up so long that you love it, but you want to stretch yourself and do other stuff. Right. You want to do other shit, uh, that you might not be as good at cause you want to challenge yourself. And it's also nicer. There's a nicer feeling sometimes to sitting in a trailer or sit or, or, or you know, going to craft <laughs> services than having to go up like how many people on the late show Friday or like what's worse than a half sold room and the curtain gets pulled. And you're like, oh, fuck, I'm failing. <laughs> you know what I don't miss is there's one specific thing about stand up I don't miss. It's the getting in at like midnight on Wednesday and having to get up at 5 a.m. for fucking radio on Thursday. Yes. I'm just like, I don't want to drag my ass to all these sad stations. I'm just like, can't take my sunglasses off because I can't bear the light. Uh, that was, the, and I think Chris Rock said this when he, when he did this for a special, he said, I just wanted to get famous enough not to have to do radio. <laughs> yeah. Just sell out in advance. And it's funny. It's the worst is when you're doing those shows and then you are traveling to the next station. The guy you're with is scrolling on his phone and you know, he's checking to see if any tickets, any tickets sold or help by it. And then just to keep scrolling. Yeah. Push the, uh, push the, uh, second show Saturday. Like, oh. Or you're on the station and they're like, first 10 callers get free tickets. And then the phone's like, don't uh, I know. I know. First caller. We'll get, we'll give you 20 tickets. First caller can bring his whole family. Like, Oh, geez. I want to die. <laughs> now, did success come quickly with the stand up? Like, did it when you first started doing stand up? Because I remember now, I, I see your credentials and you've done so much. I remember you from, from Talk Soup or The Soup, right? Yeah, so, okay. What is it called? Which one? It, it was called Talk Soup. And then I started calling it The Soup when I was there. And then they renamed it The Soup. You were oh, great wow. on that. You took over for Greg Kinnear, correct? Thank you. No, so it was Greg. And then it was uh, John Henson for a little while. And then House Sparks. And then me. And then um, I left and did Friends. And then it went to sleep for a little while. And then Joel McKeel came in and did it for a long, like nine years or something, I feel like. Was that your first big thing that the talk show? Was you know what my first break, my first real like like meaningful break was was the old Bill Maher's show, Politically Incorrect, on ABC. Oh. They remember they used to, they would panel a bunch of people. He'd have comics on all the time, and it was like a great way to come on and just like tell a few jokes, like outside of like a stand up context. There were there were like. I don't know, like, do you remember this, Jim? I feel like there, there were like a fair number of late night comedy shows where you could get a set, but like you couldn't really, you just had to like have your little tight five and you're losing your shit. But then you could go on PI and you could just like talk and yeah. be funny kind of off the cuff. And that was really like the first TV show that I got like regularly. And that was what got me a, like a shot to do talk suit because they were, it, they were like cycling through celebrities and like every kind of like Jerry Springer, like 
e ejection yeah, yeah. had like gotten a spot on that, but they were <laughs> at the time they're like, you're not famous enough. And I was like, I mean, I've, I've been on politically incorrect. Ah! Yeah. And they gave me one, they gave me one day to, to show them what I could do. <laughs> you know, whatever happened to John Henson too? Cause I, when I, I, I mean, he was very funny, but I remember a girl I was dating way back then thought he was the greatest. And I just, I haven't seen a whole lot of him after. Is he doing stand up or does he have other, I, um, I don't know John, so I'm curious. Yeah, no, he's just, I mean, he's one of the loveliest guys. And when I was up for that job, like we ran into each other, like in a Gelson's or something. And he was like, I'm really rooting for you. I want you to know I called in and told him, I hope you get the job. Like really sweet, supportive yeah. dude. Oh. Um, I feel like he has been hosting that show Wipeout. The one where, okay. you know, like where people fall into balls and stuff like that. <laughs> like the, the TV, the TV save version of yeah, falling yeah. into balls. <laughs> you just got really, really yeah, excited. Yeah, exactly. Like, wait a minute, leaning in. Matt leads all the way in. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think he's been hosting that show for a long time. Wait, is that your drink right there? That's my drink right here. This is the old fashioned. Now, wait, uh, Courage and Stone is the brand, correct? Courage and Stone is the name of the brand. Yeah. Okay, and I know nothing about liquor. So mm -hmm. what is exactly, what's in an old fashioned? So an old fashioned, a classic old fashioned is a uh, spirit, uh, bitters and sugar. That's it's, it was invented in the old guys. Here you go. Here's my little spirits, uh, my little drink uh, history. Uh, it was invented in the old West because booze was, you know, terrible. It was hooch, right? It was super sharp. And so they would keep whiskey and then they would keep rock sugar, like rock candy. And they would put those things together and it would kind of soften the flavor of bad whiskey. Oh. So an old fashioned cocktail is just whiskey or any kind of spirit, uh, sugar, rock sugar, and a little bit of bitters. Um, so that's that's a classic old fashioned. And this one uh, has got rye whiskey, American rye whiskey, uh, distilled in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, orange and cherry flavors, because a lot of times you'll get that in an old fashioned in a bar, they'll put like a little bit of orange and cherry in there. Bitters and a uh, simple syrup, no garbage, no stabilizers, no fake stuff. It's Whole Foods compliant. I wanted you to get, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have my beverage, I want it to be like a natural experience. Well, naturally, <laughs> gonna naturally get drunk. <laughs> Yeah, well, the whole, the whole Foods, uh, what did you say, whole, it's Whole Foods approved? Whole Foods or? compliant, yeah, but like, we oh. just, there's a lot, I mean, like, it's weird, like, when I, one of the reasons I created this, because you couldn't really buy, like, a pre-made cocktail in the store, right, you had to make it yourself, and most people don't have the money to do that, or care, you know what I mean, like, most people don't want to buy a bunch of bitters and crap, they just want to, like, have a good drink, but I wanted to make something that was as good as something you could get in a bar. That was, that was really my goal, it was, like, I wanted to make a bar quality drink that it's foolproof, it's 80 proof. Uh, that was going to be as good as something you'd get in a, in a bar in your neighborhood or, or better. So I wanted to make it Whole Foods compliant so it wouldn't have a bunch of junk in it. That was right, really right, right. my goal to make something really high, high quality. Yeah, and if you say Whole Foods compliant, most people understand. Like, I don't even know what that means, but I know Whole Foods has a good reputation. So basically, it's a, it's a smart thing to be because you know that it's not shit. Like, because Whole yeah. Foods has good stuff. So it's like, yeah. I, you know, so just even a guy natural, like me who doesn't know, like natural, no good. garbage. Yeah. You know, just like something that you, that you'd want to serve yourself. You'd want to drink yourself. Uh, and so it's an old fat, we have an old fashioned and we have a Manhattan and they're just like classic American cocktails. I wanted to make something that people know people love. What's uh, in a Manhattan? Drink. Manhattan typically is, is whiskey and vermouth. So this one's got whiskey. It's got vermouth. It's got some bitters and it's got some chocolate flavor in it. Cause I like it black, like my women, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, <laughs> so we launched with those two flavors and we're kind Coming out with a new one in the fall, and I mean, I mean, we have we also like we have a we have these big 750s. So you can kind of keep them on your bar. If people come over, keep them in your fridge. But it's really just made to make meant to make your life easier. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not not like I said, not meant for you to pound it. Just meant for you to have a great cocktail when you get home at night. Not a lot of effort. Uh, great thing to give. I always see that this one's like a flask, so um, it's good for your back pocket. Good for a bachelor party. Good for church. Perfect, yeah. perfect size for church. <laughs> Goes right right the jacket pocket. <laughs> Um, that's and a cool. Uh, I like the bottle looks good. Oh, like, thank you. That's a really cool bottle. It's weird. It looks like uh, it's like a solid black, but that looks really nice. That's a nice thank bottle. You. Thank you. It was. It's been a fun experience. And you know, like you've been doing. You've been how long? Have you been a stand up, Jim? Uh, almost thirty one years since yeah. ninety. I love it and I miss it, but it's a grind. Yeah. <laughs> still, even even when you're performing at like the peak of your ability and you're selling out, it's still so draining. And I I was wanted to do something that was just like used another part of my brain and hopefully would make people's life better and more enjoyable and hopefully wouldn't require me to fly to fucking Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to have other stuff because like I think Chris is right. Like you can always go. Not that stand up is easy. You can always do it. But, you know, you go on stage for a couple of months and whatever, just just kind of, you, you know, uh, shake the rust off. You'll be right back to where because I haven't been on since the pandemic started. And mm -hmm. I'm going on probably in the next couple of weeks. 
So yeah. it's like 14 months and I've never gone that long, but yeah, yeah. I think a few sets and I'm sure, you know, I'll be right back You'll to call it. Do you think, do you, when you take, have you ever taken so much time off before? I've never taken like more than 10 days off. Wow. Oh man. I'm impressed. I mean, you're like a gold star comic. No, uh, I'm a lonely, no relationship <laughs> comic with no children and no intimacy. There's a difference. That's not integrity. That's I have nothing to come home to. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I, I'm literally going to pile on you now. I should be saying something comforting, but what I am going to say no. is I remember very vividly that Jimmy JJ Walker said that he's like, don't, He's like, don't be a comic your whole life. You're never going to have a relationship. You're yeah. going to die with a chicken wing in your hand in a green room somewhere in Poughkeepsie, New York. Yeah, he's but, right. Oh, I mean, he's right. It's so sad, though. I don't believe that. I do believe that comics can fall in love. But it's just, it's yeah. a lonely it's a lonely gig. It really is. It's just you by yourself traveling. The, it's hard. It's really hard to do that, you know, well, indefinitely. And you're dating someone, say, like, and you bring that person to a show. It's like they come to a couple of shows, they enjoy it, it's novel. But after a while, nobody wants to go on the road and go, sure, I'll come to the club Thursday, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, maybe a Sunday. Like nobody wants to do nope. that. Nobody wants to hear your fucking jokes over yeah. and over again. And they don't want you to work them out on them either. You're like at, at brunch, you're like, hey, remember when we were at that movie? Uh, blah, blah. Are you doing a bit on me right now? Yeah. <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants any of that. So yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's really tough. And then also inevitably they end up in your act. Yeah, right? always, always. Yeah. I had yeah. a girl yell at me. I, I, one of the women I was dating was got mad at me because I was like joke hitting on someone in the crowd, but it was so obvious I was kidding. Like there was no chemistry between me and that person, but she was like, you knew I was in the fucking room. Like sometimes they take it personally. Honestly, what happens on stage is what happens on stage. Like they're just not, I mean, I, I look, people stand up and fall down all the time, but like you cannot get mad at something that happens in my act. It's like, that's that's a version of me, but it's not me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like to yeah. me, I feel like almost every, unless it's like out, like, out, like objectively cruel, like stage right. Aisha or stage Jim is a different person than like real life Aisha. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, don't be yeah. mad. Like I, this is just, this is for the experience. And I don't even think that people, I don't know. Do you feel like audiences take what you say as gospel? Do you think like everything you say on stage are like, oh, that has to be exactly what your life is like? No, typically audiences take what I say as melatonin. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you, uh, <laughs> have you ever I've only dated one comedian in my life and I don't know if you've ever done that but it's the first time I ever heard of, and this is again many years ago but she would talk about like our sex life because I'm vocal in bed and she mentioned that on stage and I was in that I'm like what the, like I and I'm like this is what I've been putting <laughs> the people tables through. have been turned <laughs> yes it's the first and only time I had to deal with that but I understood why people would get like like, oh, like, especially if like someone's a not dick. a comic, because they're just like, why are you, why yeah. are you mining our personal life for your work? And I'm like, because that's, I have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> but I don't know if she could, you know, I think is being a comic easier or harder. I don't know, because I couldn't pretend like I knew she meant it. Like, I, right. like, <laughs> like, I know that when I'll tell a woman, like, I was just joking. I wasn't kidding. So I knew she meant <laughs> All what she it. was saying. It's like, oh, sucks. It sucks. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I could date a comic. I, I mean, I would like, I'd like the shorthand, right? I'd like to be able to talk about work without having to explain everything, but I don't think I'd want to end up in their act. And somebody has to, this is so, this is not even sexist because I think this tracks for men or women, sure. but somebody has to go to the grocery store. <laughs> Yeah, like, there's got to be someone who's not like coming home at four in the morning and sleeping until five and eating cereal for dinner. Like one of the people in the relationship has yep. to be a person because yep. it's not the comedian. You know, that's what I mean? right. We need. To, and are you by the way, are you a UFC fan? We didn't even ask you that. Someone, yeah, I, 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 I am. I am. I, I actually fan. forgot to ask you that. Um, I, I, and you've gone to events, which is cool. And I'm thinking that I maybe I haven't seen you in person at an event. But for some reason, I was aware of the fact you were at an event. Do they ever I mean, they showed you on TV or your name got mentioned? I don't, I don't know how I knew that. I've gone to a few fights. I've gone to a few fights. Um, not enough. You know what I mean? Like not enough to be like an expert. And I'm, I'm right. totally comfortable to say like, I love it, but I'm not like, I'm not encyclopedic in my knowledge yeah. of USC. Yeah. I'm like, I show up for McConnor. You know what I mean? I used to show up for Tyron. <laughs> like, but I'm like, I'm, I will admit that I'm not like a total expert, but I do love it. Um, I went to, oh God, what was it? Was it two, which was, which was the one I went right before lockdown. So it was like March 6th. So many, so many. Yeah. In, yeah, in, I don't even Vegas. remember. You were a tight, you're a Tyrone Woodley fan. I was, I was. And I lost a lot of money you, on that last fight that he lost. Jump off the, the bandwagon or jump off the train when you say you were a fan. 
Well, I just, I, I'm not, not a fan anymore. Maybe, I, maybe I'm super slutty and I just like moved on to other people. So, wait, so you jumped off the, you jumped off the bandwagon or did someone it? cost you money? Yeah. You stop liking them when you I lose lo- enough money. I lost some money and I, I fell out. I, yeah. Have you terrible? ever heard his music? Have you ever heard Tyrone? No, I did not know he was making music. Uh, Jimmy loves this one song, Jimmy. Go oh ahead. boy. What is the song? I, I don't know. The only version I've ever heard of it is Matt. Si- oh. I almost said bellowing, but I realized that would be disrespectful. Matt singing that song at me uh, often. I- I've never actually heard Tyron. Tyron sing. Willie's. Sing- oh no! Do I need to Google it? <laughs> am-, am I going to be sad when I hear it, or I'm going to be embarrassed, or no? Or am I going to bump it? Yeah, uh, maybe none of those things. Um, <laughs> I was going to be in the, uh, in the video. A little animation to me. You said you don't like the Pixel movies, like we were talking about before, Jimmy. Pixar, yeah, that- I don't. Yeah. We had a little move, a little thing, but then he lost a couple of fights. He didn't put the video out. But it's called <laughs> falling in and out of love. Oh, and Aisha, so I don't want to. Maybe I, don't I mean, fell out of love with Tyron. Maybe I need to like. I that's need to what back happened. In. Yeah, I need to lean back into Tyron. Yeah, yeah. I went to two forty eight. That was the Zhang. That was the that was the Whaley Adjudic fight. The one where so I, that was that was probably my favorite fight I've ever been to. And I've only been to I've only been to two fights in person, and then I went to the McGregor Holyfield fight in Vegas. But two forty eight was the one where. The, it, that, I, don't, I don't know if you guys remember that fight. It was John, Jean, I would say I'm never going to Jean against Joanna yeah. and Jacek. Jacek. Yeah, yeah. Jacek. And at that, it had been a pretty slow night that night. Like the fights, like a lot of technicals, a lot of earlies. And I remember that that fight started and everybody jumped out of their seat because it was like yeah. a real fucking yeah. fight. It, I mean, like literally people were like, this is a fight. This is a fucking fight. And I was like maybe three seats back from the octagon and people were losing their shit. And also remember Jodeshik's head like, yeah. like a donut. Yeah. Oh, she became a balloon head. She, it was, she, it was like, oh, there was balloon. one of those surgeries, one of those like body modification no, surgeries. Her head was so swollen. Yeah. And I went to the bathroom oh. after the fight and Dana was coming back in and he goes, did you see that fight? And I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, that was the most punches ever thrown in a UFC fight ever. Wow. And I was like, yeah, he was like, it was insane. And we were like, we were, everybody was losing, everyone was losing. And then like they did research and I guess there was like one fight in the olden days that had one more punch thrown. But it was obviously the, you know, probably one of the greatest fights of the modern era of UFC. It's probably one of the greatest women's fight of the modern era. And just technically a great fight. Like a great, like just nobody backing down, nobody falling down. It was such, oh, uh, was, that, was, that was a great night. That made that night, actually. I thought that was like the best fight of, of 248. Honestly, that is one of those fights that you always remember. It's like uh, Mark Hunt, Bigfoot, Silva, one. It's like one of those just, just these two beasts just going at it and just it watching. Was, it was it was so technical. Incredible. Too. It was technical. Like, I always feel like what I love about UFC, and there's so many things, is that every fight is different because so many there are so many different disciplines. You don't know what kind of a fight you're going to get. And, you, and also, the discipline of the different fighters changes the dynamic of each fight. So even if you know a fighter... If they fight somebody different, their whole situation is going to change, right? So it's always delightful. It's always a surprise if you get a grappler and you get a boxer, or you get two boxers, or you get two grapplers, right? It's always going to be different. And I just remember like like being so excited by how technical it was from a boxing perspective. It went the whole, you know, went the distance, which is also a lot of times. Yeah. I think everybody in UFC, you get a lot of people, not so much anymore, but I feel like when I first started watching, you'd have a lot of submissions, you'd have a lot of early, you know, a lot of earlies. And it just was like, you got every drop out of that, you know? And I always, wa- I always want to watch every single fight. I want to watch the undercard. I want to watch the prelims. But yeah, that was a good one. That was right before lockdown. And yeah. by the way, that was like, we didn't really know anything about COVID. I remember just going around Las Vegas, like disinfecting my hands a lot. Yeah. But then I was in a stadium with like 30,000 people screaming and spitting. I had no idea what was going on. Like, you know, this was like before we knew anything. Yeah, that's right. The constant, I remember driving upstate New York and I pulled into a rest area and I wound up getting hand sanitizer and I couldn't believe, I'm like, somebody has hand sanitizer. Like I was so psyched that somebody had to have, we had no idea what we were in for. We had no idea. Early that night, we're like, okay, we're going to stay away from people, disinfect your phone, like don't touch the elevator buttons, man. We're going to be super chill. But at, like after the fight, we like went to like a like a Korean noodle restaurant and I like ate food off of the neighbor's table that I yeah. just met. I was like, hey, what's up? You got the other rings? <laughs> like, yeah. was, uh, we had no idea. Were you, now did you get it or no? Uh, I did. I did get did. it. Not, not and, from the, not at the fight though. <laughs> right. How, cause I've heard people say, uh, I, I might've had it actually around that time uh, when I came, I was in Italy 
Um, Mm -hmm. And I think I was really, really sick. How bad was it for you? It was terrible. I really highly recommend against it. Yeah, I I had a... I just, I had it an, 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 uh, like an encounter that, you know, I didn't have all the information about and, and I got it. And, sure. and, it was, and I, I really, for people that like, I came out of it and I don't want the fact that I came out of it to be like emblematic of like, it was okay. Cause it was not okay. Right. Like I had terrible symptoms. Um, I was lucky that I'm in a position in my life where I had the resources to pay a doctor to come to my house right. to give me like preventative measures that kept me from really having a bad respiratory reaction. And I think that's one of the grand kind of unfairnesses of the American medical system is that like rich people do better, right? Like I was a rich lady. I could call somebody and she came to my house in the middle of the night. For a lot of people, they tell you, well, don't come to the hospital until you can't breathe anymore. But by that time, bro, you're kind of in bad shape. You're in trouble. So yeah, yeah, so I was really lucky. um, And, but I have other friends that got it and a lot of them have long haul symptoms. And I think that's the other thing is even if you get it and it's minor, you don't know if you're gonna have some stuff that shows up later in your life. So it's, it's to be avoided. I, I, I costs, really yeah. to be avoided at all costs. I have a buddy who got it. He almost died. And it's it's been a year and he still has symptoms. There's a couple of fighters that have had that too, where, it, and, and these are, you can't get in better shape than active fighters. And, and even they, uh, well, a couple of them are like, I guess, sluggish in training. And they've, they just said they haven't been able to get over it completely. Isn't there, I feel like there's a couple of either football players or basketball players who have to wear inha- use inhalers now. Never oh, had it. Yeah, that. never had a breathing problem and have to use inhalers before they go in, they go onto the court. And you just don't know. You know, you might be lucky, you might not be lucky, but like, why stick your finger into a dark hole, man? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yes. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> may, maybe there's a baby in there or maybe there's a snake. <laughs> like, yeah. just don't fuck with it. There's Jimmy. You asked the wrong guy that question with Jimmy. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Jimmy loves yeah. the dark hole. Loves to stick his hand in the dark hole. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. I've lost a lot of rings, Aisha. Uh- <laughs> All right. Pinky's only got two knuckles now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's plug the liquor properly. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it is called uh, Courage and Stone. And where can, where can people get it? Like, is it, do you have to order it? Can you just go to any store and get it? So courageandstone.com, you can go, you can order it. We ship to 40 states across the United States. If you're in California, New York, it's a lot easier to get. You can get it sure. on Drizzly, you know, uh, uh, Saucy. And at lots of local stores, lots of supermarkets, but you can get it anywhere in the country by going to crazystone.com and they'll ship it directly to your grubby little two knuckle fingers. Yes. So go, go, go take a, a look at this and, and, you know, support this. I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm really happy. Thank I think you. it's a great business to be in. And uh, I love the bottle. I don't drink, but I love the bottle. So mm-hmm. if I drank, I would try it just because the bottle's great. And you seem to really be enjoying it. People who can't <laughs> see this, Aisha's really been enjoying these beverages. I, this is not a sales pitch. She's loving the, these. The greatest kind of like side effect of this job is that I just drink whiskey at like 11 o'clock in the morning all the time. That's I haven't great. even had breakfast yet. Oh, you're West Coast, right? <laughs> Yes. Okay. I'm I'm right yeah. That's so great. Yeah, guys, I'm living, I'm living the classiest old lady life right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's good seeing you again, Aisha. Uh, congratulations. And uh, I'm, you, you really, you look well and you seem like you're, you're doing great. And I'm happy to see you uh, doing so well. Oh, it's such a pleasure. So great to see you. And so nice to meet you, Matt. Such nice a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having Thank me. You. Aisha, yeah. Tyler. Take care, Aisha. Talk to Take you again. Care. Thank you. Jimmy. Yes, sir. You know what I'm watching? I, I should just tell you. I well, always, you can just tell me. I, I never guess. I never you know. Never, you never guess. I'm just going to tell you. I care. I myself and my wife he, are watching. We watched the first hour of it last night and enjoying the heck out of it. Nice. Ready? Yeah. The new film by Zack Snyder, Army of the Dead. Oh, it's okay. Netflix. It's got Dave Bautista in it. And let me tell you something. First hour, two thumbs up, Jimmy. Okay. Not one, two. And I'll tell you, it's a. I like zombie flicks. Zack Snyder, I know you guys are going to bring up the great Justice League Snyder's cut, and we know all wow. the things he's done. We know he's, he's very talented. Mm-hmm. Man of Steel and whatnot. But I am, I am, he, 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 he kind of like came onto the scene doing Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. And which was a very fine film with the very good actor Ving Rhames, okay, from Pulp Fiction. And great movie back in the day. So now he's doing Army of the Dead. Hour into it, it's on Netflix. Netflix, enjoying it. Give it a chance. Okay, I will. All right, that's what I wanted to say, people. Um, Jimmy? Yes, sir. Let's talk about a couple fights. Um, Maybe we should, uh, you know, I'd like to start with, 
because it's funny aisha mentioned uh, a ground fighter and a stand-up fighter and i will always in those circumstances give the edge to the ground fighter always i, I just think that you're almost always going to be able to get somebody against the cage at one point hermanson um against edmund shabazi and you know shabazi had a great first round and the second round he wound up on the uh on his back and he had a couple of really good moments. He wound up on top at the end of the round. But then in round three, you, he was a little slower. And he's fighting, and you could see him backing up and fighting, like, as opposed to taking the middle of the octagon, he was back against the cage. And you're like, there's no way Hermanson is not going to uh, put him up against the cage and pull him down. And just a really damaging third round for Jack Hermanson. So congratulations to Jack. And uh, Shawazi has lost two straight. But again, both really solid ground fighters he's lost to. Re really um great guys on the ground. Yes, I thought Jack, Jack's experience showed in this yeah. fight. Um, uh, Edmund has to be a little bit more aggressive. He, I, I liked his patience standing up. Yeah. I seen growth from his other from his last fight with Derek Brunson, which he lost. Yes. You've seen growth. You've seen, all right, in the beginning, you're like, oh man, look, he's, he's being more patient. He's not just thinking of the finish. He's just right. putting the work in until that finish comes. Uh, unfortunately, when Jack started adding in the grappling, that's when he started really, the, the levels were, were a little different there. Even though Edmund had some nice scrambles, you have to let your game go. You can't be, um, you can't be uh, happy enough with yourself saying, all right, I'm not getting beat up down here. That type of thing. Right. He, but then he actually, towards the end, he started to get beat up down there. Yeah. So I think it was a little bit of the war of attrition. He started to, he started to fade first. That's a problem. And, uh, He's got to get. He's got to have some more answers on the floor because there's there's other wrestlers, yeah, you know, obviously in this division, and they're gonna look at this fight saying, "All right, I could, I could, I could, I could get a win by getting this kid to the floor." And that ended very badly with that mount. Yeah, Just, you know, he did some damage in in the closing seconds. Yes, so, he did. Uh, Jack fought great. Jack fought great, and Edmund yeah. fought up up a level from his last performance. That's right, but there's still work to be done. He's a young kid. And I think we're going to see more from him, just like we're going to see more from, uh, I just don't want to forget this, this kid because I just watched it. Where is it on here? I don't fucking see it. Bill, Bill Agio. Is that, was that on this card? Or was that on a, it was, yeah. How come I'm not seeing it? It is. He, he, uh, he lost the fight to, uh, to Ramos uh, via unanimous decision. It was right after that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. They, I was, for some, I don't know why I'm looking on the prelims. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so we might as well segue right into that. Hicardo uh, Hemos. Hicardo Hemos. Yeah. Their H's are R's. Yes. R's are H's. Uh, versus Bill Agio. Uh, Bill Agio, uh, you know, he, he was, I think he just felt so confident that he felt like no matter, he felt he had Hicardo, uh, Hicardo Hemos just outgunned everywhere. You know, because I think that's how confident he felt. He's yeah. coming off some really good fights. And, uh, you know, I think he felt just indestructible. And then he started falling behind a little bit more on points than just getting yeah. beat up or anything. So now it's playing a game of catch up. You know what I mean? So you might try a takedown that you might not normally try at the end of a round. All of a sudden, Hikaru ends up on top of you. It looks bad. So now you're trying to play catch up. And Hikaru is timing those clinches, climbing those, timing those takedowns. I believe that inside leg trip, if I remember correctly, which was very nice. Was that that fight? That was that fight. That was very, that was done very nice. Um, even though he didn't really do a ton of damage down and he couldn't finish him regarding having dominant positions, Algio is a hard guy to put away, crafty. Uh, he's going to learn from it too. So that's what kind of stood out in those first two fights. I see some some kids there with Bill Alge Alge Algio. Uh, Alger Am I saying his name right? Algio. I think so. Thank you. Uh, him, Bill Algio and Edmund Sh Shabazian. Shabazian, fuck Shabazian, you. Yeah. Shabazian. Yeah. Edwin, I know Edwin Shabazian. Uh, his name. Listen, you're going to see a lot more of these guys in the better, better, better versions of them in the future because it, it's, they're really good technically, man. It's just some, you know, some things we got to fine tune. And experience sometimes does that itself, fine tunes it. Uh, Norma Dumont fought a great fight versus Felicia Spencer. Felicia she just, did, yeah. Get, she couldn't seem to get her rhythm going. She couldn't find find her groove, Jimmy. Yeah. Maybe, you know, um, maybe it's, she uh, did on I'm, Stella and she'll get her groove back. <laughs> I 
<laughs> come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on. Yeah, Jimmy. a tough split decision. Um, a, a tough split decision loss for uh, for Felicia. Were you on? We had her on. Was that? Were you there? Or was that oh, what week you were on? Okay. Yeah, we talked. I haven't about. been around in a minute, Jimmy. I know. Back now, homie. Uh, we also had Justin Taffa, uh, who lost the unanimous decision to uh, Jared Vendara. So I guess we're bad luck. Two decision losses from our guests. Yeah, you listen. You guys want to replace me with Forrest? Okay. Okay. Everybody's going to fucking lose that comes on this show. That bad luck fucking ginger. Yeah. Well, you know what? Too far? Too far? Cody Garbrandt. Cody Garbrandt we had on last week, too. There you go. Thank Forrest. Old mush. Put him in a closet, mush. <laughs> we never had from Brogsdale. Anyway. Listen, oh, yeah, yeah. Far, Forrest steps up when I'm out at the, at the water park. Hey, listen. By the way, they got these cabanas at the water park, Jimmy. And I'll tell you, I got one the second day. And I go, for, I go, give me the one the most secluded. And it was hidden almost, Jimmy. Ooh. Hidden. Underneath these fucking monstrous fucking water slides. And it was right next to a bathroom that nobody used. I'd go in there, order a fucking pizza. After going down these slides, have a pizza, take a little nap, have a little fucking, have a beer, go back. Are you there with me, Jimmy? I'm right with you, yeah. I'm walking. You know my knees aren't the best. Sure. I'm these fucking slides. I'm walking up these stairs like a champ. You wouldn't know I'm crippled. My wife's kind of telling me, though. She goes, you don't look it when you look at your body because you're in shape, you know? But you walk like you're kind of like a fat old guy. But you don't look like a fat right. old guy. But that's the way I walk, Jimmy. You walk the way I should walk. Yeah. By looking at me. Like, you look at me and you're like, that's how Jim Norton should walk. I kind of should me along, Jimmy. I yeah. should me along. You do. Like, God damn, let them try me, Jimmy. I'm no victim. <laughs> All right. What else do we got? Cody Garbrandt. Wait, are we up to that yet? Oh, no, wait, first. Holy shit. Did we talk about Carla yet? Carla Sparza. Again, another another striker against a, a, a ground fighter. Yeah, but that is that crucifix that call has got. Oh. oh, boy. Holy dude. She was, she fought. Like she was like, look, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm doing. I'm not just going to get the W. I know I can get the W. Yeah. I'm such a phenomenal wrestler, wrestler, you know, she does not, she didn't actually say this. I'm, I'm, no, I'm you're just paraphrasing. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm assuming. Sure. It. Of course. Because she fought like she wanted to make a statement. She wanted to make. A statement, Jimmy. Right. Yeah. You wanted to put a stamp on this fight and say, "Yeah, yeah, I know Jan's tough. I know Jan's tough. She ain't getting out of the second round, Jimmy." Yeah. That's what she said. That's what I was reading in her in her body language, because I'll tell you, she was vicious. I like me some caller Espaza. She was vicious. Yeah. And I thought she did phenomenal. Amazing win. Yeah. She really. Uh... She really gave her a, a, a very tough time. And I think she split her open too. Um, Jared Vendara got split open as well, but it wasn't as bad as it looked. It was just a head bleeding badly. And it looked like he got a, a, a pipe to the head. But then when they, in between rounds, they cleaned it off. Like it wasn't nearly as bad. But I think, uh, I think uh, Jan the had a- The former champion, Jimmy. Yeah. I didn't mean to yell at you. That's okay. But she's a former champ. Listen, I, oh, I can't yes. respect for Carla. I thought she looked, I think she looked amazing. She's ever looked. And she deserves, she deserves the fight that she wants next. Yeah. Okay, that's what I say. And she's my height. Uh, Rob Font versus Cody Garbrandt. Now, I want your thoughts on this, Jimmy, because Cody seemed very prepared. Yes, he did. And he did not seem. Uh, he he was in he was in the fight, but very behind the fight. It was it was pretty one sided for Rob Font. Rob yeah. Font is again. Uh, you know, he's, he's taking care of these challenges, man, that are in front of him. He's, he's taking each obstacle in front of him and he's getting through it. Cody being a former champ coming off a knockout of Sansao fucking highlight, fucking bending down, coming up, knocking yeah. his head off. No, no disrespect, but, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden he gets derailed again by Rob Font, but yeah. Rob Font, man, listen, him, Calvin Cater, that old new England fucking cartel. Yeah. Listen, these guys mean business, man. Big is not better. Quality, not yeah. quantity. Jimmy? Well, I think Rob, Rob looked a lot bigger than 
Cody. Um, and I think he had a reach advantage. I don't know exactly what the reach advantage was. He also had a fucking jab from hell. Oh, my God, dude. And there was one point Cody almost ducked. Cody has such good head movement, um, and he moves so well. But there's one point where he ducked down, and he almost ducked right into an uppercut. Did you see that when he done? He literally almost leaned his face into an uppercut. Well, I seen him take several shots, Jimmy. So, I mean, how many jabs did he eat? And then that right hand behind it. Uh, he was able to get the fight to the floor. Now, listen, what I'm seeing out of Cody, he's got such athleticism, such striking. Uh, his wrestling is there. Let's let's get some ground control, man. Let's get some ground. It's not listen. It's not easy. Rob Font's been. It's not like he's not working getting up. He knows how dangerous he is standing. He's working getting back up. He's hard to take down, hard to keep down. But if we work on our on our jujitsu, not only our submissions, but our get our pinning, just getting guys pinned. Take a page out of Carlos Esparza's book. Get, get in practice. Get past all these little alpha males and get them fucking crucifixed. All right. You know, look, get them crucifix with their little arms. They're hard. That's all you think it's easy to crucifix uh, fucking Uriah Faber. It's probably hard as hell. But listen, this is where we got to work, man. We got to work our ground control because that could be the, that could be, the, that could change. They get a rematch that can make all the difference. You get one takedown, guess what? He loses the round, if not the fight. That's how we got to look at it. Otherwise, you better have fucking endurance like Marab because that shit will land. That will, dude, it will, it'll, 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 ta it'll tax you, man. It'll be very taxing looking to hit these takedowns. Guy gets right back up, you know, or he gets back up. Dude, you, it's all of a sudden he lands some fight, some flurries and you lose that round and you're worst away with the gas tank. And it was a six inch reach advantage for uh, Fonta. Am I correct about that? Let me see. Uh, 65. Yes, yeah, 71. Six inch. That's a big difference. That is a big reach advantage. And uh, that jab was just was firing off. So you made it a little harder, I think, for Cody to get close to him. Hey, so I mean, listen, man, Rob Font, man, he said it the right thing. His, his, his fights, his actions are speaking louder than anything he'll ever say. He's a, he's a soft spoken dude for the most part, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you right now, he's handling business. I love what I'm seeing out of their team. You know what I mean? Even in defeat, Calvin Cato was a stud versus Max Holloway. I mean, that guy, a lot of guys oh would have out in that motherfucker. Sure. But he, he, he fought to the end. I love seeing I love whenever I see the, I, I'm bringing it up because I know they train together. Calvin Cato or Rob Font on a card. I'm like, all right, man. Yeah. I want to see what's next out of these guys. But even Calvin losing that fight. I mean, Max Holloway looked as good as anyone has ever seen him. Um, and, and Font is just so tough. Well, you come out of that thinking is just Font is just, you know, he, you know, he's just one of the toughest guys in the, in, in the uh, entire sport. I mean, oh, he didn't lose any stock. Huge Rob Font fan. And uh, again, I think, uh, Cody's young enough to obviously make some, some changes sure. and, uh, to just make some improvements, man. But he's showing, he's got a great skill set. Let's just keep adding to it, man. Let's, 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 you know, I know he visits uh, New Jersey a lot now too. And grab it, Cardo Lameda. I know, you know, Uriah and all them are phenomenal on the floor. Let's, you know, he's so used to knocking people out and putting people away. He's got such gifts with his hands. Uh, and his, he's got that wrestling ability. I, I would love for him to concentrate a little bit more on the, uh, the finishing on the floor. You know, but uh, also, Jimmy, we, we would be silly if we didn't mention Ben Rothwell's guillotine over uh, Chris Barnett in the second round. We'd be silly. We would be silly. Well, we actually, are. We are silly, but that would be that would be negligent of us and stupid. And Court McGee found himself on the um, getting uh, getting that W yeah. was Claudio Silva, which is which is great, man, because think that Court McGee is just a workhorse. Yeah. Court McGee is you're never going to see Court McGee being, ah, oh, he's a little... He's a little uh, taking the taking the foot off the gas tonight. No, you don't. You don't hear that. Yeah. That guy's always got that foot on the gas. He's like Ricky Bobby, man. You you're not first, you're last. He's going fast. He likes to go fast. What do you think happens next, Matt, with Esparza? She's saying she wants a shot, and the uh, they have not updated the standings yet, which is very common. Uh, she beats uh, uh, Joran uh, number uh, three. She's number four, so they probably switch. Uh, does she get the shot at Rose next or do they, because again, even though it was a first round knockout, do they give Rose Wiley a rematch? Because uh, for some reason I was thinking a rematch in China. I'm assuming they're going to give the rematch, but why would I assume? Because again, I mean, I mean, Carla kind of earned it with that tremendous win over the number three ranked fighter. I'm with you with that. You know what I mean? I like that. You know, uh, I, I, I listen, I'd watch either fight, obviously, yeah. 
You know what I mean? Uh, we, I, I, man, we have to mention the great Paul Felder announces retirement. retirement. And I think he did the right thing. The guy's going out. He still has his marbles. He still has his chin. Yeah. A lot of people leave the sport with the chin. Imagine me, Jimmy, the warrior I am, staying around too long. And then I get into a street altercation with you, you little bird. You hit me on my chin. I get knocked out because I left that chin in the great sport of MMA. No. No. You retire when you still got your chin. You got to defend people sometimes, Jimmy. You know me and you are just out there like straight up superheroes. We see somebody doing wrong. We got to step in. Yeah. 100%. I'm going to meet my, my, my black belt test today and break in his black belt today. I haven't trained in a little bit and he's got the confidence of a black belt, but I will attack my friend. And guess what? If he taps me, he's still my black belt. I can't lose. And also my buddy Mondo is going to work in. So Jimmy, I'm looking forward to that later on. I got my jujitsu going on. I told you, Jimmy, I'm out of balance. I've been eating pizza and I had Chinese food last night. You're treating yourself. Well, listen, I like to have a good time. But, you know, I like to have a good time training, too. But back to Paul Felder. Congrats on a great career. Man. Amazing career. I, I mean, I'm disappointed um, because I love Felder. So I, you hate to see yeah. him go. But he's got he's a great announcer, dude. And what's he do? Enjoy his life and, and not have to deal with that. By the way, man, you were talking about uh, who's your favorite superhero? My favorite oh, of all time, Jimmy? Yeah. Who I grew up? Listen, Jimmy, I'm going to say Wolverine. You he's love like, Wolverine, yeah. Well, okay. I not, and I know you're thinking Hugh Jackman from the movies. Yeah, he's great, but he wasn't my Wolverine. Wolverine no. was five three, short little, like rough, ferocious. Uh, look at me, I could play him. Uh, That's right. You know, but why would you ask that, Jimmy? That's no, because we were talking about it, and you, uh, I didn't know who your favorite was. I, I just like wasn't like sure. Guy heroes, like the ones that are they, they're a little bit of a bad boy, but they 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 do the right thing. They're a little bit of a loose cannon. Like, I like the Punisher. I like, growing up, I liked Wolverine, who was with the X-Men, but sometimes he'd go a little bit off. He'd go, yo, come on. He's friends with Nightcrawler. Come on, Elf. He'd call him Elf. Let's go drink some beers. They'd have some beers. And, you know, Cyclops ain't doing that. He's a goody two-shoes. He's a little bit of a kiss-ass to Professor X. He's a little bit of Jean Grey. You know, I'll walk you to class. He's that guy. Yeah, Wolverine was the little, almost like in that, like that scene from Swingers, but Vince Vaughn. And fucking uh, John Favreau, when he's like telling, he's trying to get back in the dating world, he goes, don't be the PG guy. Don't be the PG, be the rated R guy. Where you're That's not right. sure we like you, but we're kind of you're on edge a little bit. And watch it. If you check your chat, I sent you a cool picture of Wolverine. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it, Jimmy. I, I don't. I don't need to see that ever again. Don't, don't do that to my favorite. And first of all, you knew the answer when I asked you who my favorite I wasn't was. sure. No, you had that ready. You had that ready. Now you're fucking with my emotions. No, well, who else could you have said? I am a five, six man, Jimmy. I didn't have these big, tall superheroes to look up to. I was like, but I'm not nearly their size. And then there was Wolverine. Yeah. And he was short and rough. And I'm like, oh. Do you like Batman or no? You don't like Batman. Batman was super smart. I'm not, I'm, I couldn't really relate. You know, I wasn't getting, I was bringing home D's. I'm not like, ah, I can't ever be Batman. Wolverine, I don't even know if that motherfucker got out of Woodley, uh, went out of a junior, I was naming my junior high. Yeah, <laughs> the fuck? I don't know if he got out of fucking middle school. I don't know if he went to school. He's part fucking animal. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, Jimmy, so listen. Oh, oh, I already told you I was watching Army of the, <laughs> Army of the Dead. Listen, yes. Jimmy, you're going to give that a try? And then we'll text after, almost like a book club? I will. If you love it, Matt, I will give it a shot um, out of respect for you. I great will give it a of, shot. Great night of fights, Jimmy. You yeah, know? amazing. Uh, I was there. I know you had Benil Darush on. Yes. And, and, uh, and uh, Jim sent me another file. Is this something different? No, it's, a, it's another superhero. Oh, should I click on this? Yeah, I mean, you like, yeah, I figured you liked, uh, All right. you like superheroes. So I figured I'd send you some superhero pictures. What's wrong with that? Jimmy, Jimmy, are these selling? Are these I have selling? A, I have, they're, not, I, they're going on sale uh, next week. I'll get you one. I have to get into merchandising. You're always with it. You're so with it, Jimmy. You know, 
Hey, listen, I'm so proud of you. Jimmy, it's so good to be back. Is there anything you want to plug? I think we're done. Yes, I'll say this. I'll plug this. The new Chip Chipperson podcast is up. Uh, it's a real good one this week. We'll go to chipchipperson.com to get all of the uh, the merchandise and the shirts and all that stuff, if you wish. It's a podcast? Chip Chipperson's podcast, yeah. It's a podcast. Podcast. Okay. Uh, Jimmy, I'm doing cameos. You know what I mean? Excellent. Yes. I'm not a Doug. Does Doug Bell do cameos? A lot of them. Tell me, tell me, so, tell me you got one cameo for Doug Bell. I got, I got one to do as soon as we're done. For the people that don't know, Doug Bell is a friend of yours that used to be a comedian that lost his, his confidence and now he's trying to make a comeback. Is that what's going on? Doug Bell was a comedian who had to leave the business after an incident of self-harm. And he hosted a show called Ring My Bell, which he was sued for because it was too much like Wheel of Fortune. And now he comes back, but he's on medication. So a lot of times he has stuff on his lips or Ooh, he's slow and his timing is not particularly great anymore. Oh, shit, man. Okay. All right. Well, hey, listen, you know. Don't you like um, Doug Bell? I've seen, I, 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 I've seen him talking before a little bit, you know. You love him, yeah. I think I'm going to give him another shot, I think. Yeah, he's you a know? good guy. But there's no one I love more than my Jimmy. <laughs> I, I, when I see you, Jimmy, I'm gonna. You better be ready for such a hug. Oh no, I'm looking forward to it. See how when you grab your wrist, you put it across the neck. Yep. That would be, in case I keep, kiss your little head, like no, no, no. You might want to just hit that frame. That way, I, I, you know, I don't overbear. I, I don't get too overbearing. How come you don't put your thumb under when you grab like that? Why do you grab like that? Well, it's a better grip, Jimmy. It's just what? a better, solid grip. You could rest your whole body on this, and this. This will slip. If I try to do this and you rest your body, this will fall. I do this, it'll 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 stick. Wait, where do you I put do your this, thumb? Where's I do your this, thumb? And I rest your whole body weight on this, and you go down on my thumb. I can break my thumb. I'm not breaking nothing there, Jimmy. It's a okay. solid grip. You're not breaking through that shit. If I was fighting a vampire or a zombie, like an army of darkness, and I I probably have some kind of protective mother or measures sure. over here, but I'd have this framework, jujitsu framework. Same okay. way I defend a headlock. They're trying to play tight to me in a street fight, trying to bite my face. And then I reverse them and I Kimura that motherfucker. Okay. Anyway, Jimmy, so good to be back. You know I love you. Good seeing you. you know? I love you. I'm glad you said it back, Jimmy. All right, everybody. Goodbye, Unfiltered Army. See you soon. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. <laughs>